What's up guys, it's Alex and today I've got a really cool video for you guys. Today is going to be a jig fishing video through and through. The first part is going to be some jig fishing footage from the great state of Michigan that I thought I had lost due to a corrupted SD card but was able to get it all back. And then the second is going to be me breaking down that footage and really explaining the two distinct bites that we got on in one day but are two bites that are similar but very different as far as flipping a jig that will help you guys right now and I think can be some really good tips for you guys to go catch some fish right now on the jig. But before we get into all that, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video and that is the good people over at Ridge and the Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is an awesome small form factor minimalist wallet that is packed full of all kinds of awesome features, including the ability to hold up to 12 cards in this bad boy. It's got a money clip on the back where you can hold some cash as well as the most important cards that you use every single day. These things are made out of some awesome materials like aluminum, carbon fiber, and titanium. They're also backed by a 45 day money back guarantee as well as a lifetime warranty against defects of anything with the materials of this wallet. Another cool thing that I got for you guys is a discount code. You can use the discount code code beard it'll save you 10 percent off your first order on the ridge website and another cool thing that they've got going on right now is a huge sweepstakes where you can win a jeep and or fifty thousand dollars cash and for every dollar that you spend it's an entry into that giveaway so go check out ridge wallet i've been carrying a ridge wallet for a long long time long before they sponsored this video i picked up one of these bad boys because i got tired of carrying around that bulky leather wallet that i don't think anybody really likes and this holds everything that i need for the day for the water for wherever that i am at but without further ado enjoy this fish catching footage and then stick around at the end for the full breakdown of what was going on crack this cracking this All right, boys and girls, so Ben's trying to get us back up into this little canal here, but I'm starting with a Beast Coast. This is a battle flip with a little chigger crawl on the back, some 20 pound fluorocarbon 7.3 heavy Veritas PLX and a seven gear ratio Revo X. We're going to see what we can get done today. Very excited, very excited. Hopefully I get to uh, crack one or two, but essentially just keeping the flipping stick in our hands uh, gonna flip this jig around and catch fish. Oh, geez, oh, Pete. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Look at that freaking just eat chunker. Heck yeah. I think that's just a little too shallow. I mean, a daggone certified Michigan stud. Freaking got him too, son. That fish wasn't going nowhere. <laughs> okay, well, I've injured myself. Ben, will you unstick this fish so I can get this to quit bleeding? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Lord have mercy. Yeah, I'll put him back. Thank you, sir, for helping me out. Mm -hmm. I'm bleeding. Fish is good. We'll put him back. Thank you for participating. I 
I, I love how green those fish are, dude. Jeez. Yeah, that was fun. Heck yeah, man. We had me a, uh, or I'll get it. I need another shigar crow. They be in the box. The shigar crow. I am throwing the four inch chigger crow in Watch Him Alone. No kiss. Name that movie. I'll give you a dollar. Too. Look old gnarly eye. I even got an eye. That's awesome, man. Couldn't see it. fish a little fish out here a little bit deeper on the old jig there you go poor ben he's back there trying to get the builds to stop running when when the water got in the back of the boat the builds turned on and something got on the bilge hole i guess this is the best way to say it and it's blocking the rest of the water from getting out of the boat and so it's making the bilge just run and run and run and run and run so Ben's back there trying to fix it so that it quits running and running and running and running. I think that's why I got this bot, that bot earlier. My God. It's because it's a freaking big one. Yeah. A couple more casts. Heck yeah, dude. Look at him, man. These fish are so yellow. Look at that. Yeah. So, let's talk about what was going on. Like I said, we we're going to talk about what was going on. So, what happened in today's video is two very different types of jig bites, but both kind of in the same vein because we were flipping and kind of casting the jig around. But we were casting the jig to grass. It's just the difference was in one scenario, we were fishing grass that was that deep. And in another scenario, we were fishing grass that was in 15 to 20 foot of water. And so we're flipping grass and these fish are using this grass. It just shows you two very different ways that fish actually use grass this time of year going on into the fall. So the first scenario that we were in, we were flipping some reeds and some millful. So there was millful kind of mixed in with all those reeds that we were flipping. And those bass were using those millful edges in those reed patches as just kind of have a hidey hole and a little place for them to sit and for them to ambush bluegills and what you guys don't realize is you know even though we were just flipping kind of the outside edges and kind of back into the first you know third of those reeds that water ran all the way back in those reeds and there was a lot of bites that we heard and we heard fish actually blowing up way back into the reeds and so it was just a really unique bite in the fact that we were able to kind of hit that first third and get those fish to eat and it's also great great example of fish using the quickest cover that they can find when they do go post spawn and then using it for an extended period of time even after the spawn is over and they kind of start to transition into those summer patterns and then eventually fall patterns as well. So what we were throwing there 
was a Beast Coast. This is the double wide, the battle flip, and this is an awesome little jig. This thing right here is made for heavy cover, and the reason for that is that double wide weed guard. It's got a double wide, but not double thick weed guard, which really helps to protect the point of that hook. And essentially with this bait, you can flip it anywhere that you would flip a Texas rig. It's actually really fascinating to see how well this jig does around really heavy cover grass and stuff like this. Now, obviously you're not gonna be punching mats with it, but I have put this thing into cypress trees. I've put it into willows. I have put it into cedars and lay downs, beaver dams. And then obviously those reeds that we were flipping, you can get that jig in there and get it out. Now we're throwing it in a little California 420 color with a chigger crawl on the back. There's green pumpkin chartreuse on there. And really what I was looking to do is mimic the bluegill really, really well, as well as baby birds. There were a lot of baby birds being born in those reed patches. The little black birds with the red chest and the red wings that fly around and live in those reed patches. There were a lot of those and there were a lot of baby birds and we even seen some baby birds in the water. And so I know for a fact that a bass is gonna take advantage of that kind of meal if it were to hit the water. And so doing a really good job of mimicking not only the bluegill, which was probably the obvious like main forage that they were looking at, but also those birds was gonna be huge. And so that's why we went with a little bit darker skirt, a little bit of red in there, just something that's gonna do a good job of mimicking all of those things. Now I was flipping a half ounce jig and kind of casting a half ounce jig. The biggest reason is just so I had a little bit more weight to kind of punch through that stuff and get down into that stuff. I noticed when I was throwing the three eighths, I started with the three eighths just because of how shallow we were. I noticed when I started with the three eighths, I wasn't able to actually get it to drop down over some of the reeds and throwing that half ounce just helped it to have a little bit more weight and a little bit more momentum to kind of drop down over some of those reeds and into some of that grass and to get the bites that I did. And then again, obviously, Double wide weed guard I think was the biggest thing there because it helped me to be able to get the jig in and out without getting hung up a whole, whole lot. And then you heard me right at the beginning of the video throwing that 7.3 Veritas, 7.3 heavy Veritas PLX, 7.5 gear ratio reel and some 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, this is a different reel. That reel is actually right here on this rod, completely different rod, but love that reel. It's the Revo X, but this is the Zeta. It's just white because they put it on this Veritas combo. But if you're looking for this reel and you can't find it, the green Zetas are the same as this reel right here. But throwing that with some 20 pound Sunline FC Sniper, um, literally my favorite fluorocarbon as of lately. Again, I don't work with those people, just some really, really good stuff. But yeah, that was kind of the first bite, right? Flipping those grass edges, flipping those millful patches, flipping those reeds, because those bass were using the cover that was available to them the quickest. And um, you know, right after they got done spawning, all those bass did was move up into those reed patches and start using those reed patches and they will use those reed patches all year long on into the fall and really all throughout the fall until either the water gets sucked out of there and they have to leave and or they move out deep for the winter because my buddy Ben, he stays on that bite. There's a lot of my buddies that live up in Michigan that stay on that reed bite, not only when I was up there, but all throughout the year. And then down here in the south, it's a great bite to get on as well, especially if you live a little bit further down the TVA system or if you live on really any rivering body of water that has those reeds in them. Um, they will get up in those reeds. They will use those reeds because there's a lot of food there. There's a lot of oxygen. There's a lot of shade and there's a lot of ambush points. So that's where those bass want to be. Now, the other jig that we were using was actually an unreleased jig and is still an unreleased jig. And that is the new Berkeley jigs. Um, I was fortunate enough to get some unreleased Berkeley product while I was up in the great state of Michigan. And one of those was this Berkeley jig. And the reason I use this Berkeley jig is because it was heavy enough for what I was needing to do with it. Unfortunately, I didn't bring any of my three quarter ounce flipping jigs up to Michigan with me, just not thinking that I would need them, um, but ended up getting on that deep flipping bite in that grass. And what me and Ben were doing is just like the bass in the first lake where they found the first bit of cover that they could find being just moving back into those reeds, the lake that we were on the second part of the day 
was a more glacier style lake that had some grass in it. And so what those bass would do is they would spawn up shallow and then they would immediately start moving back out deep and you would see these big migrations of fish and they would get on the first grass patch that they can find. And those grass patches were anywhere from 12 to 20 foot of water. And what me and Ben were doing was actually finding those grass patches and you could see the tops of them with your eyes as well as finding them on the graph using down imaging and Ben's forward facing sonar. And we would find those grass edges and flip and cast these bigger, heavier jigs down to them. And just like the fish in the reeds, those bass were just sitting on those grass edges using that grass and reacting to those jigs dropping by their face. So what this is, is a 5 8 ounce. It's the Berkeley skipping jig, I believe is what this one is. And so it's got that big flat head. It's obviously designed for skipping, but it also does a really good job of flipping as well. And then honestly, I'm not sure what color this is. It's kind of a green pumpkin brown. Again, pairing it up with that chigger crawl and green pumpkin chartreuse. Just trying to do a really good job of mimicking what is the main forage in the great state of Michigan for most of those bass, which is bluegill. And then in this lake, a few perch were in there as well. So we were mimicking bluegill and perch, flipping those deeper grass lines, using those graphs. So, you know, both flip and jigs, just two very distinctly different bites, but the fish using that grass for the same reason, full of oxygen, full of shade, full of cover, the ability to ambush stuff. And then that's where all the food was at as well. And then again, throwing that jig on the 7.3 heavy Veritas with some 20 pound fluorocarbon and that 7.5 gear ratio reel because hitting those fish, it doesn't matter if you're that deep or if you're in 20 foot, you wanna hit them hard, you wanna get them moving, you wanna get their head turned, you wanna get them out of that grass. And using these jigs, using these big, heavy, hooked jigs, jigs that you can really hit them hard with, seems to be the key in putting more fish into the boat. So really cool bite. Um, really cool experience and I'm really glad that I finally got this footage for you guys because this was a day that I was super excited to share with you guys um, but unfortunately a lot of the footage got corrupted including um, a segment where Ben forgot to put the plug in the boat and so the second lake you'll notice that I'm wearing different clothes and that's because I actually had to get in the water and put the plug back into the boat um, and ran back to the truck and grabbed me a change of clothes so that I wouldn't be soaking wet and miserable but really unfortunate that we didn't get that uh, whole segment on there but uh yeah, good stuff, good times, and uh, can't wait to get back up to the great state of Michigan with my buddy Ben and do some fishing. But, as always, guys, thank you for watching. Questions or comments, you know where to go leave them. Also, go down in the description. I'll have everything linked that I used down below so that you guys can check it out. But, as always, you guys are sweet, and thank you for watching.